Please take us through the beginning of Surah Al-Isra. Oh, go straight to Quran. You're on it today, bro. Jibreel Aisham just said in Bura, just behave yourself. Basically, yeah. <laughs> behave yourself. Do you know who you're with? And it was in Sahih Muslim. But the Prophet Sallallahu stopped at the grave with Sayyidina Musa Ali oh, Don't let the car, the bag, we're coming uh, to that. Uh, Hold on. No. <laughs> Stop what I'm saying. Yeah. Unless I, if you're something else. No, I'm Because it sounds like you wanted to go up me there. Right. <laughs> wait for the next one. On this episode of Sunnah Stream, the panel discussed the miraculous night journey, Al Isra. You're listening to Sunnah Stream, a podcast exploring the prophetic way. Bismillahi wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi wa ba'd. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, we've got an incredible topic to uh, speak about today. It's the miraculous uh, night journey of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no, referred to al- al-Isra. Uh, and of course, it gets mentioned in the beginning of chapter Isra, chapter 17 of the Novel Quran. And we're joined by our uh, our scholarly co-host, Sheikh Harun, assalamu alaikum. Muhani wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just waking you up. You caught with the wrong moments. I've, no, no, I've got something in my mouth and I'm trying to finish oh, sorry, it off. Sorry, sorry. I'll come back to you in a bit. <laughs> okay. And uh, of course, Sheikh Burhan, as alaykum. Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We pray that you are both well, inshallah, oh, and uh, equally excited to go through what is, um, you know, we, when we spoke about the, the blessed birth of the Prophet, oh, alayhi salatu wa salam, I think we rem- uh, mentioned it there that that was no doubt the greatest of the days of Allah's creation. But for the life of the Messenger himself, oh, alayhi salatu wa salam, I, think, I recall we said, yeah. this is the greatest moment of his yes. blessed life, alayhi salatu wa salam. So that's a, a beautiful place to start. And, um, you know, Sheikh Harun, if I could start with yourself. What was the context of the miraculous night journey? And do we have an idea of kind of dates? And um, obviously, the, the, you know, it's known in Muslim community about certain dates and whatnot. Um, what do we have confirmed? Yeah, we have one or two things confirmed, but... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> but, see, I, I don't need to be on good behavior in this podcast, right? Yeah, yeah go ahead. I you're at home, you too, you're yeah. at home in Liverpool <laughs> in Felicity House. Um, right. First of all, like I told you, I'm a bit low energy today. It's all right, we'll pick you yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> uh, my throat's still hurting. It's been hurting for a while. Um, so I was hoping to speak as little as possible because we've got a Sheikh al Azim <laughs> with us, the Grand Sheikh. <laughs> and also you. Uh, when we have a little chat before and you're just dropping all of these hadith and hikmah and everything. Well, I had great teachers. So my so my plan is I'm the interviewer today. Oh, are you? So, study the ethro. <laughs> Um, no, I believe there's some great context behind this great there? incident and dates and so on. Can you share some of that with us, please? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll start us off with two if you want them. <laughs> Jazakallah khair. Yeah, come. Um, so, uh, first of all, just, just about the, the dates. Um, it's, in terms of seerah, in terms of looking at the life of the Prophet, sallallahu sallallahu alayhi sallallahu alayhi sallallahu. what seems absolutely, ca- what is absolutely categorical is that it happened in the time of Makkah. And in terms of Makkah, it's perhaps the most significant event that happened to so the this Prophet. Is before the Hijrah, Islam. basically. Sorry, yeah. It's clearly before the Hijrah. Before the migration. Before. It's perhaps the most significant event that happened. Um, but to pin down an exact date, that's not as straightforward. And in truth, when we look at the whole narrative of Al-Isra al Mi'raj, in a sense, um, getting into that discussion is taken away from the greatness of the event. Sure. So the general view of the Imams... Uh, I've just got something in front of me. There are many different views about the year it took place. The most well-known, uh, commonly held views that it happened in, in the year of sorrow, after the Prophet's nice experience, so, the pains of losing his wife, Sayyidah Khadija, losing his uncle Abu Talib, losing um, or uh, the rejection from the people of Ta'if. Um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he's nice being rejected by the people of the earth, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts him. So the likes of Surah Yusuf is revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in peace. And, sure. uh, and then he's taken to his Lord Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So that seems the most likely, although there are there are other, but that seems the most likely. And um, when exactly it happened, many of the Imams, I have in front of me some names here, like Imam Suyuti, um, he mentions the likes of um, Al-Ghazali um, and, and other Imams, they, they took the view that it was the 27th of Rajab. Um, and y- your friends and brothers, right? Who yes. say, what's the delil for this, bro? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, 
our dalil for this, our evidence and argument for this is that the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا رَأَهُ الْمُسْلِمُونَ حَسَنًا فَهُوْ عَنْدَ اللَّهِ حَسَنًا Allah. Whatever the Muslims deemed as being good is good with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so there's always been a practice in the summer from the earliest of times of recognizing and gathering and celebrating and speaking about, about these events on the 27th of Rajab. So that indicates is a sacred month, right? From the four yeah, sacred months, by Rajab itself, it is, is a yeah. sacred month. Yeah. So that indicates that there is there clearly is something to it. Allah. And it was just something, you know, uh, Sheikh Burhan, we were just uh, discussing just before we started the, the podcast, and I, and I recall, you know, uh, Alhamdulillah, the significance of the twenty seventh of Rajab, and, 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 and no doubt it's become a dominant opinion uh, amongst the Ummah. But we've got a, a, a classic uh, historical example of the great Salahuddin Ayyubi, Allah. that he enters into Al-Quds al-Sharif to liberate it and he waited for Friday the 27th of Rajab in the year 583 AH which corresponds to the 2nd of October 1187. So you know before somebody says so I told you you should be asking him the question No, no I'm just saying like if, know, where's, you know, where's if, he dropping if, these gems from? If people, if people <laughs> say you know yeah well there's no significance in that day I don't know where that's from well you know it seems our pious predecessors certainly attached themselves to Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I mean, and, and this is uh, the practice that when, whenever we find significant dates, part our, our aim is to preserve the life of the Prophet. <laughs> we have to pass it on to the next generation. It's the greatest gift we can give to them. <laughs> One of the ways of preserving that is to mark these days and remember mm-hmm. them mm-hmm. with a show of gratitude and a different attitude to these dates than any normal day. These are not normal days. No. So when the, the cycle of time brings us back to the remembrance of these significant events of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it stirs something in the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's like you said, Prophet, like, like, before you said, it's like this, this nispa. That's it, that connection. connection. We're just it. seeking connection to the Habib Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. Any, any connection. Connecting, uh, and connecting with times, places, Absolutely. dates, as we, as we have here. One of the in terms of context, I forgot. Go on, Bismillah. I want to mention that for I got something for you, bro. No, no, I bet he has. <laughs> you keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He got away easy last, last no, no, podcast. No, no, he's he's going to get some. Go on, Bismillah. For, for our listeners, is that th- this, as you mentioned, the Isra is that this contains so much depth. It links to seerah, it links to personal things, emotions, it links to connection with Allah, it links to fiqh, that I would I would strongly uh, suggest and recommend everybody to listen to this till the end because there's some amazing points. That if, if you just listen to the beginning and you don't get mm-hmm. to the that end, gems, you're going to lose, you're gonna lose out. So... Mashallah. Uh, Bismillah. Bismillah. Bismillah, bro. Oh, am I not allowed to ask you? Okay. Yo, bro. I've <laughs> yeah. got a question for you, bro. Yes, Sheikh. Uh, <laughs> so, not so long ago um, was Halloween. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I'm sure you're doing a bit of tricking and treating and you're getting Just up to all the of door. the kinds, right? <laughs> didn't answer the door. Um, but yeah, and also when Sheikh Burhan spoke about like dates and times that, in a sense, are etched into our collective um, understanding. Um, uh, uh, all kids will know about Halloween. They will all know about bonfire night. They will all know about like Christmas. Even even in some communities, they'll know about Diwali and Diwali as well. They will know about they will know about dates of religious celebrations of other faiths. But then we're told uh, don't 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 speak about speak about a journey anytime you want. But especially for kids, unless you make an occasion of it, there's nothing to it. Mm-hmm. So 27th of Rajam needs to be penciled into the diary of, of Muslim homes. And, and one thing, I, you know, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, from our work, we, we, we do quite a lot of renovation work at Masha Laksal al Mubarak. And we often have these conversations with our partners on the ground in Jerusalem to say, you know, what's happening. And trust me, they're gathering. Uh, they are gathering in, in Masha Laksal al Mubarak. They're talking about Al Isra wal Mi'raj and they are in, in bringing life to that night. They are gathering. So just again, for those who say, you know, what's the significance? Just go have a, the, the proof's in the pudding, as they say. Yeah. Go to Al Quds al Sharif, the ho- holy city of Jerusalem, on the 27th of Rajab, and see how the Muslims are speaking about the fada'il of, of that night, uh, about Masjid Al Aqsa al itself, and of course what took place. Which leads us nicely. Um, well, uh, can I make a suggestion? This is a serious point now. I'm going to start behaving right. myself for okay. two minutes. <laughs> Um, perhaps a future podcast about uh, our interaction with religious festivities of other faiths. Sure. I mean, how how is a community we should deal with that? That's Absolutely. That's no. Very good. Yeah, inshallah. I should we'll take, you, you'll take your advice on that. Probably you can correct me on this if I'm wrong, but when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in Medina Tul Munawwara and he mm-hmm. sees the Jews marking the 10th of Muharram yeah. as a date when Sayyidina Musa Alayhi yeah. Salam was, was freed from the Fir'aun. Yeah. You know, is that, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, 
also marking that date is that not giving us a principle mm-hmm. that significant dates can yeah. be highlighted and established and marked yeah with, you yeah know, absolutely in that way absolutely and it, and it, that's not unique just to that incident it no. now becomes a principle that any day of uniqueness yeah you can make a show of gratitude to Allah subhanahu sure. wa ta'ala for that and these are i guess collectively known as the ayam allah the yeah. the, day, mm-hmm. the great days of god mm-hmm. uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala um, yeah. You know, Sheikh Harun, in, you know, when we talk, we're talking about um, Al Isra al Mi'raj, please take us through the beginning of Surah Al Isra. Oh, go straight to Quran. You're on it today, bro. This one, inshallah. <laughs> Tell us about the opening of oh, chapter 17. That's, uh, that's a muhadra in itself. No doubt. Al Sheikh Burhan, he's done many a lecture on this. Right. Um, well, well, the first thing about it for for the for the listeners. Um, so, what our Sheikh Yathrib is talking about here is that not only not not only is he referencing an ayah in the Quran that speaks about the journey from Mecca to Jerusalem, which is the Isra, but in addition, there's a surah named after the incident. Um, so, um, as he said at the beginning, like the greatest event that happened to the Messenger in his awesome. life. Is, is marked within the Quran. Um, and so, before even looking at that, what that then makes Al Isra, it becomes firmly a point of Aqeedah. It, mm-hmm. it becomes such a clear point of Aqeedah, um, such a point, uh, clear point of belief. And there are many miracles of the Prophet. So if awesome. somebody turns around and says, That's, uh, I don't get that, uh, okay, you may, you may, we may not, we may have issues with you. But it's not an issue of Iman and Kufr. It's not an, that. But now somebody turns around and says, I do not believe in Al-Isra. Now Allah's marked it in the Quran. He's given a verse about it. He's given a whole surah named after it. Um, and in that surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares his glory. He declares his glory. Subhan. Subhan al Um And the term subhan wa tasbih. Tanzih. Tanzih Allah amma la yaliqu bi jalalih. And in our minds, in our limited minds, it's about absolving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of limitations that we place onto him. So when we feel that's beyond, that that can't be, that that's our limitations, not his. Not his. So we accept that he's told us in qalahu sadaq. That's, it, that's all we need. That if he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it, then that's it. It happened because there's nothing inherently impossible within it. There's nothing... Um, and then the only other thing, because there's so much in the ayah. Oh, right. So the first point about that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he glorifies himself, the ultimate demonstration of his power. And then the second, bi abdihi, abdullahi wa rasoolah. Um, the two, it, it, it's, 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 an, it's a fascinating point that the Quran speaks of the greatest miracles of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Revelation of the Quran, al-Isra, um, in shiqaq al-Qamr, surat al-Qamr, the splitting of the moon. The greatest miracle is Quran. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about our slave. When it comes to al-Isra, his slave. Abdullah for the Nabi is a sharaf. It's the greatest honor, the greatest honor that the Prophet had. Allah. So there's so much more, so much more within that. Jazakallah khairan. And um, I guess the point also to, to, to mention, like for me as, as a layman, Sheikh. Is, 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 you know, like when we see something astonishing, amazing, we naturally just say, subhanAllah. Yeah. Like you go, glory be to God. Like that is just amazing. And when you have Allah saying it about himself, that's something else now. Yeah. That is something completely different. Um, so the other, do you say glory be to God? Like uh, Glory be to God. <laughs> or you say subhanAllah. <laughs> Come on, bro. You're one I'll, of us. I'll, I'll do both. He, he I'll do both. He did go to a grammar school. Didn't you? Uh, that's it. Uh, that's apologies. It. That's um, <laughs> You know, Sheikh Burhan, we've got here, so I'm going to play the <coughs> devil's advocate. Uh, um, the ayah of Quran here, it mentions that, you know, glory be to uh, the one who, and this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referring to himself, who took his 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 servant, the Prophet, alayhi salatu wa by night from al-Masjid al-Haram ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa, from the sacred precinct of Masjid al-Haram in Makkah al-Mukarramah to Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak. Um, and it, 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 I mean, it doesn't go further detail about that. And inshallah, what we hope to do today is, oh, is actually furnish some detail. Because, and I, I guess I'd ask you just to maybe clarify that point that, you know, there may be some who will believe 
that that's what Al Isra is. It's just a a, a one time journey, one stop from uh, Masjid Al Haram to Masjid Al Aqsa. Would it be fair to say that, or do or, or should we actually at that point look for Hadith literature to to furnish that point? Yeah, uh, with, with all of the incidents in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that, that's where we take it from. So when we look at the versions that that we have, which are in Sahih Al Bukhari, in Sahih Muslim, we have many narrations. And again, we were discussing before the podcast, there's, there's more narrations about the Isra wal Mi'raj than all of the other incidents collectively in the Meccan period of the life of the Prophet. So it's just as if the report is mutawatir, right? This is like mm-hmm. massively recorded, uh, many companions narrating the incident. Absolutely. This this becomes a, a point of belief. Yeah, this becomes a point of differentiation between true belief and disbelief. That do you actually believe this? And going back to the point that Shaykh Harun made, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the ayah with subhanallah, like Allah. subhanallah. The reason being is that if you're doubting this because you think the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did this, then Allah is almost like protecting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and defending him. That look, it's not him. He, it's not him making the claim. I'm making the claim. Allah, Allah is making the claim. I'm the one that took him. If, you're, if you've got an issue with this, take it up with me. And you've got I, I, I love how me. in the same ayah, it also mentions, li nuriyahu min ayatina. Like, so you're like, human beings, we love to ask why. Yeah. Just this like it's just we yeah, yeah, yeah. but why? And Allah Allah answers those before it comes even to our mind. So we we the Allah's might and power speaking, uh, so we can show him from our signs, and then that's further expounded on in Surah Najib where Allah says, Laqad ra'a min ayati Rabbihi al Kubra that he saw <laughs> some certainly saw some of his Lord's greatest no. signs. So it uh, so we, we, we that's complementary. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sheikh Harun, that, that's actually a principle, right? Al Quran Yufasiru Ba'aduhu Ba'ad that mm-hmm. parts of the Quran are clarifying other parts. So we have from his signs and then later on in Surah Najib, it's the greatest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's signs being mm-hmm. shown on Al Isra and Al Mi'raj. Absolutely, and and with, with these with these incidents and the narration of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we see beautiful parallels with the other prophets, and and that shows the greatness without diminishing the greatness of the other prophets. Sure. Shows the greatness of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This point that you've mentioned, the why, it wasn't to increase the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in yaqeen. No, it wasn't to confirm something to him that he, you know, because when we look about Sayyidina Ibrahim alaihi salam, Allah subhanahu wa taala shows him. You know how he brings the dead back to life, mm-hmm. and the re- one of the reasons is liyatma in the qalbi. You know to give. You know to, how would you translate that, Sheikh? Uh, so that my heart be content. Yeah, mm. heart be content. Heart I mean, content. again, we don't we don't say Sayyidina Ibrahim Salam had any lacking in his iman whatsoever. But that's one of the why's. You know, Allah wanted to reassure him. Allah wanted to give him extra confirmation. Here is Allah wants the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to come. There's, there's no there's no other reason. And this is, like we were saying about this Isra, it's so beautiful because this is probably the greatest love story you'll ever come across. Mm. And it there's should be no viewed greater, that way. Yeah, I really you never come across a greater love story. And I think, it. can I just, just throw just a point about yeah. the love story? Um, the whole of the series is the greatest love story there is. The life of the messenger is that. But unfortunately now we, we're in an age where why, why, why? Mm. And... I heard this from, from our teachers is that we're moving away from how the seerah was meant to be experienced. It's just meant to be a wonderful story and that's it. The wives are not the important thing. It's just that he's the messenger. God, just enjoy, um, enjoy that experience with him. So let's, we're, um, the, we're the observers of this beautiful uh, outpouring of we, love we get between to see Allah this. and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we just, yeah, we're just come, and we talk about the universe and that universe is that verse of love between Al Wadud. So. Oh, the, you're going deep now, bro. Aren't you? The, you need to the, come the, back. The, the Take a step back to his habib. Take a step Ali back. Come on, you're going too much now. So now speaking about the love story, <laughs> I don't even know if I answered your question that you asked. It's okay. Yeah. So well, it doesn't matter. I, don't, I think I don't <laughs> think my, my question's getting ignored. So it's okay. I, no, I yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I didn't even understand your no, question. No, yeah, neither did I. Don't worry. Alhamdulillah. It So here we go. Grammatically correct for me. So here we go. And I remember one of our teachers mentioned this. Okay, oh. like how the account starts. Oh. So we're, we're going to use. Um, Afwan, before you do that, Allah barakna hawla. Allah subhanahu wa taala bless those lands, the land of Al Aqsa, the land of Sham. All of those are blessed by it. Um, but lands and places and times are only blessed because of what happens within them. So Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa taala barakna hawla, we blessed it. We blessed it because of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Khalil Rahman who came there. And we're blessed because of the coming of the final messenger, Al-Aqsa. 
um, to, to Al-Aqsa. So the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showered upon Al-Aqsa, there's nothing inherent about Al-Aqsa. There's nothing about it. It's about the coming of the prophets and the coming of the final messenger because of which that land and the surrounding lands around it became blessed. Mashallah. And as we'll see at the end of this podcast, there will be the unique gathering of all the Anbiya, mm. alayhi wasalam. Uh, and that, and that happened nowhere else. Other than nowhere that. else. Nowhere else. I mean, after after the declaration of prophecy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam at the age of 40, outside of the, the you know, uh, Mecca and Medina and the Arabian Peninsula, if I'm not mistaken, that's the only other geographical location that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam goes to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't go to any other country. Outside, outside, do you say outside the Arabian Peninsula? As in outside of the Hijaz and out of, outside of that area. Does the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam go Tabuk. Tabuk, 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 I think yeah. it's the nearest. So, so those, beyond Tabuk. Uh, but you say uh, outside the Arabian Peninsula, no way. Because you did go to Sham before prophecy. Before, before prophecy. declared prophecy, yeah. So those three places are the only yeah. ones. Yeah. So Tabuk is the only one as well. Immense. Immense in mm-hmm. connection with the seerah. So to start the uh, Al Isra, uh, of course, the Noble Quran mentions that it was from the uh, from Al Masjid Al Haram, the sacred masjid in uh, Makkah Al Mukarrama, uh, and in uh, Sahih Bukhari. And, and, and I did lo- love the way this was explained. Y- you, the Hadith begins by saying, "Furija saqfu bayti wa ana bi Makkah." Like the the Prophet Al Isra, so in this narration in Sahih Bukhari, he says, "Whilst I was in Makkah, the roof of my house was split open." Mm. Like how about that for a dramatic start to the journey? And, and I remember the teacher said, he said, let me shake your brain by the way. He said, mm-hmm. the angel could have knocked on the door, right? Or use the door, mm-hmm. right? No, the the roof was split open to start the to start Al Isra. So when we talk about the miraculous nature of uh, of the journey, mashallah. In in that narration, we we find that very beautifully expounded. And then we have the under the narration, and I guess the ulama have brought the two together. That the Prophet Ali found himself actually at, I think they say Hijr, the Hijr of Ismail Ali Salam, at the semicircular wall of uh, the, the Kaaba at, at the beginning of the journey. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so when we look at the narration, because uh, that's not what, what now we're going to go through at these unique moments of the Prophet's taken so, so, by his Lord. So, so. Um, the first thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the greatest of angels to bring the greatest of all creation to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, but then as you began, the way that he comes, Jibreel and Islam, the way that he comes to the Prophet he comes as, as Khadim. He comes um, as a servant. Yeah, even though he enters through through the roof, yet still according to other, um, there are reports that mention the Prophet in that moment he's sleeping. And so and in, in the gentleness of all manner, in the gentleness of all manner, Jibreel and Islam, um, he, he, he wake, awakens the Prophet for that moment. So at the very beginning, there is something about Adab al-Malaika, how Jibreel and Islam, which we're also going to see when Buraq, when Buraq now is, is, is receiving the Prophet and the great beast of that chain is receiving the Prophet So the journey begins with uh, Khadim al-Anbiya, uh, the servant of the Prophet, Jibreel and Islam, um, about to invite the Prophet nice and prepare the Prophet nice and for that moment that he's now going to, he's now going to ascend or travel and then ascend to his Lord Subhanahu Wa Taala. And um, Sheikh Burhan, we're seeing in the in, in the narrations that this is another moment of the Inshirah uh, Sadr. Uh, sorry, uh, the, the the opening of the blessed chest of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. If you could take us through that. So the narration is in uh, Anas radiallahu ta'ala an, in Sahih al-Bukhari where he mentions that the, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that he's in the house of Sayyidatuna Umm Hanit who's the daughter of uh, Abu Talib the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sayyidatuna Jibreel alayhi sallam opens the chest of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he mentions that he washes it with zamzam uh, some people, uh, some of the scholars comment on this and they say that Zamzam was ennobled mm-hmm. by being allowed by being to be touched t- because <laughs> the superior, uh, the, something inferior could not cleanse that which is superior. Yeah. The heart is greater than the Zamzam, Kawthar, Anhar al Jannah, the water from the hands of the Prophet, which is the holiest. No, the hands of the Prophet, the water from the hands of the Prophet. You pass so, the test. He's passed. He's soon. It's okay. You can carry he's on. Soon. You, carry on. <laughs> you can carry on. <laughs> so, so the the you know the Zamzam is is placed on the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, 
and then a, he brings a, a golden tray full of wisdom and faith. And he pours the contents of it into the chest of the Prophet ﷺ, and then he reseals. Um, the the amazing thing is, is this is we see this incident with Sayyidatuna Harima Sa'adiya when the Prophet ﷺ <laughs> is young and Shaq al-Sadr and the heart is actually taken mm. out at that time. It's op- open heart surgery, you know, laser surgery. Because the angels are made out of light, they 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 take uh, the heart of the Prophet ﷺ. <laughs> 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 But the, the interesting thing here is when you go on a journey, when we go on a journey, we prepare physically. Here the Prophet ﷺ is preparing spiritually. He, he makes no physical preparation for this. He's about to be taken on the longest, <laughs> the greatest, most physically probably intense, spiritually intense journey that he's ever going to go anybody on or anybody has. could ever go on. And yet there's no physical preparation because... This is not the realm of, of the physical. This is not the material. This journey, the preparation is a spiritual preparation that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam goes through. And then, uh, Sheikh Haroon, you, was, you mentioned this. Um, cross <coughs> why, to why, why, did his, why did his heart Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam need to be filled with wisdom and faith when he's the source of all wisdom and faith? Faddal <laughs> Sheikh. <laughs> the Riddler. <laughs> Come on, answer the question. Come on, bro. Come on. Why let's do, let's do Adri. I, I don't know. Uh, you're yeah. gonna, you're gonna let us know. No, no. I'm asking the questions now. <laughs> um, Allah knows best. You want to help him with that one, please? <laughs> Carry on. Have you not got an answer? Is that, what you're that is a, that is the biggest trick question. Thanks for that. <laughs> that's called, that's a curveball. Uh, I'll let you answer that in a future podcast if you like. Um, that, is, that is a very interesting point there. Yeah. <laughs> I'd go with preparation. Go, go one preparation, thing, I, one yeah, thing yeah. I will say, I, I heard Ulama say this, which I think is a, a really beautiful point, that when uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invited uh, Musa Islam to, to Mount Sinai, and we're going to reference that in a moment. Correct me if I'm wrong, he, he, he waited for some 40 nights before mm-hmm. conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then only the title of Kalim Allah, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to. Here, there isn't this 40-day delay or mm-hmm. an invitation or... Any of that. It's mm-hmm. like the Habib is just being brought. Yeah. Like you said, by the, the, the greatest of the angels. And we're about to see now the mode of transport. And this which now brings us to, uh, and I've yeah. seen mistranslations of this, that the Prophet Sassam then went to Barak. La, it's not what the narration Barak says. Barak brought was to brought to him. Brought to him. So it, what was Barak's reaction? And Barak, interesting enough, has a very interesting meaning in Arabic. Barak derived from Barq, lightning. Mm, so we're, lightning. we're getting an idea of lightning, the, yeah. what it's from, its compo- composition and speed. What's the reaction of, uh, of you know, You know, Barak I was here? just thinking just then, um, of all of the moments in, a, in, this, in this special journey, the two, when I read it, there's two that, that for me are more emotive than anything else. Mm-hmm. One is the reaction of Barak. And the second is a Nabi Sallallahu That is just subhanAllah. That's just, a, that just blows your mind the way that does. I'm going to come You're going to leave that for the second podcast okay, follow up. Okay. In Mi'raj. Don't let <laughs> no, it out. Don't, don't, don't let, let, let. <laughs> a yeah, no, you're right though. No, no, I know what you mean. Honestly, I, I mean, they're the most emotive moments in all emotive. of this. Um, so here, like Buraq, um, lightning, and the beast that's been honored to carry Prophets after prophets after prophets. But now he's come to the final of all the messengers. So Barak is now shaking. Um, and I, I, I mean, I, like I've got some, like one of the phrases it mentions. Uh, well, well, actually, no, it, it, it's, it's interesting, the reaction, right? The, the, yeah, the way the reaction, it kind yeah. of moves and excitedly and, you know. Yeah, it, I, I, it, because it was too much for him, guess, but too much. It was almost like, like when you finally met the one that you want to see more than anybody else, it's just like, I mean, for example, <laughs> I should have mentioned this, but my daughter, like she, one, one in the Virtues tour that happened recently, where there were singers there, like she's always listening to this particular singer, and I dragged her along, and she was like, she just sat, she couldn't say a word in front of him. <laughs> like she was just like overwhelmed yeah. at that moment, and that's what happens to Barak at this point. Like he's carrying prophet after prophet after prophet, but when... When the final comes, the greatest comes, uh, he's awestruck. Uh, and he can't move at that point, such, such that Jibreel has to like, kindly, or he has to reprimand him. And even the wording is such such amazing wording. Abi Muhammad in Allah. Uh, do you do this with Muhammad? 
That's amazing that Abu Muhammad in Taf'an, فَمَا رَكِبَكَ أَحَدٌ أَكْرَمُ عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ Allah. Nobody has written you more noble with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than him. Jibreel just said just behave yourself. Basically, yeah. <laughs> behave yourself. Do you know who you're with? And he knew who he was. Yeah, Burak. that's why he reacted. Because as you, as you all know, like, animals knew the greatest of all messengers. They all knew him. They spoke to him. The Prophet spoke. That's in the, in the miracles. Another podcast to come. The little and the the miracles of the, of, of the prophets, nice and amongst them. There's a whole corpus about prophets, nice and talking to, to animals, like Suleiman, nice and spoke to the ants, and that's with our prophets, nice as well. So then, this is a line. Farfadda araqa. Allah. Farfadda araqa. Burak now begins to sweat all over in happiness because the prophet is about to climb him, but also in embarrassment. That I've behaved, that I've been waiting all of existence for this moment, and I've behaved in this manner. It's such an amazing, yeah. and inshallah, Sheikh Burhan's going to share something about yeah, you said something very the relationship about like of the Quran. A, 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 it's such a beautiful inter- point. Interesting point there. <laughs> He's like, we're off now. <laughs> How can I talk now? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just happy listening. Uh, beautiful narrations. I mean, I mean, the point of reflection there is about how we see the narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reacting to revelation. Now, when the Prophet ﷺ used to receive revelation, it used to have a transformative effect on him. You know, the Sahaba used to see the Prophet ﷺ change, and it, you <coughs> see that something weighty is coming down on the Prophet ﷺ. The men, it's mentioned how if he was on a riding beast, that riding beast would collapse. It wouldn't be able to carry the weight of that revelation. Uh, and so here, when we look at the Prophet ﷺ as being described by Sayyidina Aisha as the Qur'an, mm. Mm. Then the Buraq is almost responding in a similar way that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to revelation, yeah. when he's trying, when he's going to mount it, mm. he, he is sweating because the weight, the gravity, the immense, the grandeur, you know, all of that, the awe, the majesty. Can you imagine all of that coming on top of the Buraq? So he's, he's just trembling, mm. you know, and it really is, it really is. He, 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 there is no way that he would react the same as he reacted for anybody else. Yeah. There's got to be a difference because... He's, it's, it's Akram. Like it's like how you, how you react to Sheikh Ibrahim. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when he... Uh, especially uh, when he uh, batters you the night before uh, in the boxing yeah. ring. When he says he wants to fight you. <laughs> yeah. He puts the gloves on. <laughs> so we've got here now the... the, the they now commence uh, the blessed uh, Al-Isra from Makkah al-Makarama, Umm al-Qara, the mother of all oh. cities and civilizations. And... Um, Again, uh, uh, sorry, uh, in Sunan and Nasai, um, I'd like your comment, Sheikh Harun, on this that we have in the Riwaya. It says um, Jibreel Islam speaks to the Prophet Ali Sallam and says, "Inzil for Sali." He asked the Prophet Ali Sallam to dismount from Barak and to pray. For Fa'altu, and the Prophet Ali Sallam prayed. So he prayed. I assume now two rakaa of uh, nafal uh, mm-hmm. at, at the location. And Jibreel Islam, for explanation for us, the wider audience, atadri ayna salat. Uh, are you aware, or do you know where you prayed? Salata bi Tayba wa ilayhi al-muhajir. You prayed in Tayba, one of the names of al Marat, exactly. Which will be the place of the emigration. And I guess this is another deal that this is before the Hijrah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think you mentioned this point at the beginning. There, there's almost a gap in our understanding um, of, of, of this special occasion now. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa. And the gap is like, what happened in between? Was it, and although al-Buraq is such such a phenomenal beast that carries the Prophet, he's traveling in a blink of an eye. Sure. But is the journey straight from al-Masjid al-Haram to al-Masjid al-Aqsa? The reality is that there are clear reports that state that there's stopping points in between. Um, And one that we're going to come on to shortly, which is based upon Authentic reports comes in Sahih Muslim that the Prophet Sallallahu stopped at the grave of Sayyidina Musa and he said, oh, Don't let the car out of the bag. We're coming uh, to that. Uh, <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> no, <laughs> Stop on sorry about that. No, no. I, oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Go easy, bro. <laughs> no, like for example, yeah. no, somebody could say. Well, my point, after yeah, my yeah, points was yeah. that that's absolutely confirmed. It wasn't straight from Al Haram to straight Al Aqsa. It's authentically confirmed. Um, so just as it's confirmed that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi stopped at the grave, then there's other reports that mention, for example, as you just said, that the first stopping point was Al-Madinah, Al-Munawwara, directly north. 
He's gone from Mecca to Medina. Do you think there's a huge significance, of, like you said, about the context of it being the year of, of sorrow, how there's an in, incredible, you know, we say it with, with deep hearts to say there was a huge re- rejection of the messenger, mm-hmm. especially after Ta'if, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Aisha radiallahu anha, when she asked the Prophet Ali I mean, Medina, Manawara, what was the hardest day for you? Yeah. He mentioned Ta'if, Ta'if yeah. children being, yeah. you know, commanded to do such evil acts. Um, but but then point, at this moment, he's shown that this is where you'll yeah, be. You're, you're, you this you is will it. be given permission to. Taif have refused, but Medina is not you're, going to refuse. Taif is not going to refuse. So it's but here's my how that's the first stopping point, mm-hmm. leaving Makkah and Mokarama. Mm-hmm. So, 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 so a point's just come to me that, that what could also be understood from this is that the people of Taif rejected the Prophet ﷺ. Now the Prophet ﷺ is about to go to Medina to Al-Munawara. Mm. It's almost like through this incident, Allah is teaching the people of Medina that when he comes to you, Look at how I welcomed him. Allah. Make sure you give him a welcome. Allah. Oh, don't, he's don't going do, deep. He's going deep on us again. <laughs> yeah, don't do what the people of Taif did. This, this, is, is this is the land of Nakhla as well. This is the land of the date palms. The, the, Medina this is why the whole, of, the whole of Medina to Munawara comes out. Well, 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 Allah. 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 We go to, sorry, you have the, the point. Sorry. He said Allah plays two rakahs everywhere that he's going. What do you take from that, brother? I <laughs> take that as, yeah. uh, for me personally, that if you're in a sacred space, um, which is significant to Allah and His Messenger, like Allah, Anfield. Well, Carry I don't know about that. <laughs> nice right, though, but yeah, there is a connection. There yeah. is some Carry connection, on. but not direct. <laughs> that I, th- I think we should. Uh, w- um, what I'm personally taking from this is uh, adab. That if you, if you're going to have etiquette with a land, uh, an interspace which is sacred to Allah and His Messenger, Ali Salam, pray there. Have mm-hmm. some gratitude. Like mm-hmm. as you know, like we were talking about like days and the prophets, we saw this before and we've talked about this before on podcasts that they observed it by fasting. Shukran lillah as gratitude mm-hmm. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surely this is another, like cause this, this is in a night. You can't say, okay, so now I'm going to fast. What? No, well, this, you're in a space and my own take on this, a beautiful way to do that. Fall into sajda. Shukran lillah. So any place that's known to be traversed and walked upon by um, special people, you're taking from this, you pray to enough of that. Well, look, you do Tahiyat al-Masjid, don't you? Why is that? Because it's a masjid, that's why. It's an obvious one. Come on, bro. Come on. You're going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to see that in a moment? Go on. Uh, on <laughs> give a this, better answer. If, if, no, no. <laughs> when we go to places in this day and age, what, what do people do? They go there, they'll take a picture. Yeah. They, they'll, they'll do a oh, bit of graffiti. Oh, worse, worse than that, they take a selfie. So they actually put the significant place behind themselves. <laughs> <laughs> this is... Zamzam <laughs> Tower in the... Yeah. Uh, or, or they'll graffiti the place, you know, so-and-so was, was here. Was here. Uh, you know, I saw this in Arafat. I couldn't believe <laughs> it. <laughs> you know, the, the, at Jabal Rahma? Yeah, no, Jabal no. Rahma. I was sold that. I couldn't believe that. I, I honestly Rahmah. couldn't believe people walked there as a tourist. So now what we know about the Day of Judgment is that places and our surroundings will bear witness. Mm. Mm. So what, what will what will they say about you and their interaction with you? So so-and-so came and they took a picture and they left. So-and-so came and they, they engraved on me and they left. Whereas when you pray there, that is bearing witness for you on the day of judgment that so-and-so came to me. And this place, because of its connection with Allah and the beloved of Allah, the witnessing of that place has immense significance for you. That will have a rank for you on the day of judgment. And, and there's, there's something this about the Fakhr of Madinah and Manawara. Of course, can that you, is the can, resting place of the best. Can you imagine if, if the grave of Sayyidina Musa salam, comes to you, comes or Madinah al Manawara stands, Medina is going to stand for you on the day of judgment witness. and it's going to say witness for you. And it's going to say he came here and he prayed. Like, like kind you of even see people in masajid, uh, they pray in one area, but then they'll move to another place yeah, in the mas- yeah, masjid. Why? Because we want as many witnesses many, as possible. Many witnesses. And these are the greatest and this, of this the witnesses. this is the fragrance mashallah. that we can leave behind in these places. I mean, I know when people go to blessed places, they put like perfume and they, they kind of trying to make it look good. The greatest fragrance you can leave behind that has everlasting impact and benefit for you till the hereafter is that you pray there and you mark that place with the and glory and the praise Prostrated and the salawat place. of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because when you pray, salawat are there. Mm-hmm. Sheikh Harun, mm-hmm. there's another stopping point. Oh, so we, more. so we, we've, got, we've left Makkah al Mukarrama. We went into, you know, the second Haram, Medina al Manawara, and then the, the narration says Thumma qal, and then Jibril alaihi salam said uh, they continued on their journey. Inzil fasalli, uh, dismount and pray. Fasalaitu, and the Prophet alaihi salam again prays. Tadri Aina Salait, do you know where you prayed? Salaita bituri Sayna, Haythu Kalam Allahu Azza wa Jal Musa alayhi salam. Allahu Akbar. Mm-hmm. Now, so this is Makkah. 
then Medina Munawwara, and now we have Mount Sinai. And the, pro- the Prophet ﷺ is, 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 is told, Haythu kallamallahu azza wa jal Musa alayhi salam. This is the place where Allah the Mighty and the Majestic spoke to Musa alayhi salam. So this is in, in modern day Egypt, of course, the Sinai. Um, you know what that reminds me of? Um, وَالتِّينِ وَالزَّيْتُونَ وَطُورِ سِينِ وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينَ I think Shaykh Abdul Asraji rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned when you look at those three that Allah swore so by he said they are places of revelation Allah he says التين الزَّيْتُونَ he said is Al-Aqsa he said it's the land of figs and olives he said that's where uh, Isa alayhi salam received revelation وَطُورِ سِينِ that's the that's the Mount Sinai of Musa alayhi salam وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينَ that's Mecca so he said the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by the greatest of all places where revelation came down. So this, uh, so here again, uh, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa after going to Mecca, then he goes to um, Mount Sinai, which and generally historically it's always been said to be in Egypt. Uh, there's, there's an alternative view that's appeared more recently, um, which is that it's in northwestern Saudi Arabia. So this place called Jebel Lowes. Okay. Um, so there is, uh, they're not actually Muslim, but there are some, uh, some researchers have concluded that the descriptions of Mount Sinai, um, that's in Egypt, doesn't match up with the biblical descriptions. Because the, the Bible has um, a, a very detailed description, but there's a particular mountain. Are you quoting Bible now for the Leo? Do a reversal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for that. Next. <laughs> so yeah. So whatever it is, it's still on the way, and and that fits in more because you're going directly north. You're going from um, Mecca to Al Medina and and then well, directly north, it's just there. on the border with Sham. That's where it's it is said that it, that it is. Prophet nice and dismounts there, <laughs> and he prays two rakah in recognition of Nuzul al Nuzul al Wahi. That Musa and Islam, he experienced special moments with his Lord at that point. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we've gone from Makkah, Medina Munawwara, Turi Sayna, and now Sheikh Burhan, we get another stopping point where again uh, Jibreel al Islam, same, <coughs> same wording, Inzil Fasalli, dismount and pray. Fanazal, fanazal tu, I, I dismounted and I prayed. Do you know where you prayed? Salaita bi baiti laham. Haythu wulida Isa alayhi salam Allahu Akbar Allah. Now Where have you prayed? Just on all of these questions I just want to clarify here That when Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam says Do you know where you have prayed? Never does the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Reply by saying no I, I see no Yeah no, I, I, I agree yeah. completely There's no Yeah even Sayyidina though Jibreel The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Is categorically speaking Because he says For so late I, I, And I prayed okay. And the reason, uh, you know, uh, yeah, Jazakallah khair. No, it's yeah, so, so just, no, that's why I said it before, I think, and Allah knows best, it's more for clarification for us. Absolutely. The audience. Yeah. Because if he, if he, he knows, say, but we need to yeah. know. Especially because m- most now Muslims don't even know about these stopping off points. Yeah. No. So yeah, it's been taken away. Ever, yeah, they need, it's been taken need to away know. from us. We need to know. So now we're in Beit Laham, which literally would translate as the house of meat. But if you listen, listen to it more carefully, Beit Laham, Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Oh. Yes. We're going to have a story now, yeah. aren't we? No, well, no, About that, a stable that, and Joseph we, and three wise men. We'll leave that for a separate okay. podcast. <laughs> Are we having a Joseph in there? <laughs> well, uh, what, Yusuf and Najat? Yeah. I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, the mythical character. So now we're in Bethlehem. <laughs> but then again, it's clarified why that is significant to us as believers. Haythu wulida Isa alayhi salam. The place where Isa alayhi salam was born. Your comment, Sheikh Burhan. I mean, I'm itching to make a point here, but I'm going to save it for later. Okay. I'm, no, I'm say it, say it, say it. No, I'm going to save it. Oh, okay, say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to out of Adam for the show. No, 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 no. Don't, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. I'm going to save it for later. <laughs> I'm, I'm itching to say it, but I'll so save it for later. So it's enough to say we went from Sinai, and now we're actually in Shah, or we're in now modern day Palestine. Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Mm. So we're closing in. On the holy city of Al Quds Sharif. Oh, Not yet. <laughs> so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is stopping now at a place of the birth of a prophet, the birth mm. of Sayyidina Isa alaihi salam, and you're seeing different reasons why a, a space is considered sacred. Mm-hmm. Medina Tul Manawara is, is sacred because a prophet migrated to it and he's resting there. Sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. Mount Sinai because this is where the conversation between Allah and Sayyidina Musa and, and a place, place of revelation and now here you're seeing a place of the birth of a prophet you know so any in by any connection if a place is connected to somebody who is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that place becomes a place of significance and blessing 
Mm-hmm. Now going back to your point. Oh, what was my point? No, I said you. you, you, you I didn't you, have a point. You fired too early. No, I no, didn't no, have I'm a point. Let you go. I've well, got no points. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Before the Prophet Ali saw something, oh, it's the holy city of Jerusalem by its name as well, uh, Al Quds al Sharif, mm. the holy city of Jerusalem. In Sahih Muslim, it mentions that Maratu uh, ala Musa leelta usriya bi in the Kathib al Ahmar, wa huwa qaim yusalli fi qabri. That the Prophet Ali saw as narrated oh, by Anas ibn Malik. Anhu said that on the night journey, I I happened to pass by Musa on the night of my on the night of my night journey by the red sand hill, whilst he was standing praying in his grave. So this is yet another one of those mawaqif, one of the the points of, of, along the journey, outside of Al Aqsa. And I guess I, I guess one I want to mention here as well, which is interesting, is correct me if I'm wrong. Musa Alisam had a, a a burning desire to enter Al Al Ard Al Muqaddas, the Holy Lands, to enter into Al Aqsa like the previous prophets before him had, and in fact, at, at his dying wish or his du'a, he asked Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that if I can't enter it because of what Bani Israel's refusal to enter the Arba'in, those forty years of wildering in the desert, that at least let me be buried a stone's throw. From Al Aqsa, from the Al Ard Al Muqaddas, the Holy Land, and here mm-hmm. we see, along that journey, the Prophet Ali Sallam will now meet Musa Sallam at his grave. So, okay, so this is Rawahu Muslim, fi Sahihi. Uh huh. So you might want to translate that. <laughs> so this is reported by Imam Muslim in his in his authentic narration. So this stopping point is absolutely authentically narrated. But I just want to I just want to mention something before um, the other ones. So Medina and um, uh, um, Mount Sinai and Bethlehem. Um, perhaps one of the reasons why this has been taken out of the collective knowledge of the Muslims, where it's just Mecca to Jerusalem and nothing in between, is because the the authenticity of is perhaps not to the same level. Um, however. The average Muslim who knows about Lisra still doesn't know that the Prophet stopped at the grave, even though it's authentic. So there's something more. There's something more like, why Why are these reports being removed from our understanding? Why is it that even somebody who's been a Muslim for so long, he doesn't know about the, the stopping points? And a general point, because this is all about uh, one, perhaps the greatest event. It is the greatest event in the life of the Prophet for him. These are, these are dead in the books of Sirah. And the standard of report and transmission in the books of the life of the messenger in his biography, they're not of the same standard as the books of hadith. The books of hadith are establishing law. There the standard is higher. Um, whereas the books of prophetic life and biography, they're not establishing points of law. It's a love story. That's what we mentioned before. So therefore, it's never been the case with the imams, the scholars of guidance, that they've, that they've put such stringent criteria for acceptance of these narrations. So in case somebody's listening and saying, like, where's, where's Ustad Yathrib, Sheikh Yathrib and Sheikh Burhan getting all these stories from? So they're all there in books of Sirah. They're all there. We just need to recapture our history and our legacy, which is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then, um, I'm going to throw this now to Sheikh Burhan. Please can you explain to us, what was Musa Alaihissam doing in his grave? Especially because according to Qawm al al Muslimin, yeah, according to some, the prophets nice and dead, and the prophets are dead, so they don't really exist in the grave. Yeah, here he's praying. Shed some light on that, and please. And standing. While oh, standing. and stand. I, I know. I know. We all going with no, this. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying. But it's not just. You know. How can somebody who's dead be praying in his grave? Explain. Uh, and, I, and again, this is the beauty of these podcasts, especially for me as a student being here, that you learn so much on on. <laughs> The, on, on the, the spot, on, on the and it's usually from a study on, from set, <laughs> on set. You learn that. I mean, what, what's amazing here is, and I, I'm, forgive me, I am going to jump, <coughs> jump to the Mi'raj. The, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes awesome. significant stops there as well in in the next <laughs> in, in a, the non earthly realm. Yes. But what we're seeing here is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam making these stops. It's almost as though Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is teaching us that don't just think that these amazing, special, blessed places are just in the hereafter, you know, Jannah and, and all of these places. There are special places on earth and don't overlook them. Oh, don't don't oh. miss out on being connected to them. And 
also, I I really find that some Muslims have a, a real issue with death for some reason. Yeah, you know oh. when now when somebody dies, it's all over. Like don't go, don't go to the grave. It's shirk. It's bid'ah. It's you know you're gonna become a kafir <laughs> if you go there. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, if you go there, your aqidah changes. Oh. You know, by going and to the a grave. Yet, he's telling us to visit graveyards because he did on the journey. He did, and he did as well. He did because because as a as your belief. If you believe by asking somebody else for help or visiting somebody or making dua in the presence of somebody whilst they're alive, if you know if you're believing that that person independently is going to be of benefit to you, then yeah, that's that shirk. We believe that everything is from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, but He it's through asbab in this creation. Shaykh Burhan, have you ever heard of any Muslim saying that the Prophet Nisam helps you? Any Prophet, any righteous being, independence of Allah. Have you ever heard I've any never, Muslim? I've never ever heard that. Never ever heard of that. Never, never. It doesn't never, exist. Never heard it. But what, what I'm trying to say is when it comes to death or graves and the dead, there seem, seems to be this fear. It's almost mm-hmm. like, it's almost probably the Halloween thing. I don't know what it is. No, no, but, no, no, but, no, but people but, start no, seeing. But, I don't know no, what but, they start no, seeing. Tripping treats at the graves of prophets. But maybe it's the hub of that we're now, whether we like it or not, we're living in those yeah. times he foretold. Because what we believe is that love this world yeah. and hate death. So anything yeah. attached to death is like, oh no 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 no. And, and this is the thing, like but when it comes when it comes to death, like Allah. what we believe in Islam is death is the end of time. It's not the end of life. Ascent. It's Mashallah. not the end of life. And so here, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when we we're told about the martyrs, you know, that do not even don't say that, don't they're, say even that they're dead. And Allah doesn't say don't say that they're dead. Adaban. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says don't say it because it's not does your it's word not would not conform to reality because mm-hmm. they are they verily they are alive if that's the rank of the martyrs we know that the prophets have a greater rank in every respect not just generally in every respect the prophets are greater than anybody else oh, no, in creation yeah. anybody else. so Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam is definitely alive and we're going to see no. Uh, the prophets are alive in their graves praying no. in case we wonder what they're doing and, and, you know, they're like, and now we have another it's conforming to for, exactly that hadith for our listeners I like to reference books yep. so that oh, they can read further we got, got Dalil now the book oh. of uh, Sayyid Muhammad Ali al-Maliki mm-hmm. Hayat al-Anbiya yeah. you know he's got a book on the, the lives of the prophets uh, salam, beyond this world mm-hmm. It's just been published actually It's oh. just been translated and, uh, and published by Al-Ghazali Trust you, you can find that mashallah. Highly recommend people to read upon this Imam, al- Imam al-Bayhaqi has a risala um, as, as a small work Where he The hadith that you mentioned He gathers all the asanid of this And I think He relates that to 16 different isnad For this hadith um, That prophets are alive in the graves praying just to highlight the fact that it's absolutely confirmed. There's no shadow of doubt about so if that. We now, Forgive me, I didn't even answer your question, nor Sheikh Harun's question. All right. <laughs> Standard. So when it comes to sta- <laughs> Standard. <laughs> Standing, uh, praying, you know, oh, Yusalli. This, this word here, Yusalli, there, there's nothing, he does not say Yusalli Salatan. He doesn't say he's praying Salah or what oh, is no, he praying? No. He just says oh, he's no. So what's he doing then? Now, what, one of the interpretations of this is that he is, Sending salutations on the Prophet Sallallahu oh, Alaihi Wasallam Allah, 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 Allah. Because how could it be That the Prophet The greatest messenger The, the one that Sayyidina Musa Alayhi Salaam His leader and our leader Absolutely He wanted to be from his Ummah mm-hmm. he's, mm-hmm. he's passing by And this is Once in a lifetime <laughs> opportunity And he's going to be busy Praying Salah No it's not possible the, His attention And, and not only is, is, is what comes Alayhi next and and of, Because I'm just wary of the time yeah. It's what comes next yeah. and, and also just finally On this point that Even in your Salah when you see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, to turn your attention to him does not break your salah. We see that from the Sahaba. Well, more than that, they were actually instructed to break their salah break if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi called them. Absolutely. And we have that from, yeah, Nafal prayers. They were required to break it. Mm-hmm. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called them in their Nafal prayer. And, and there was a specific incident where that happened. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called the Sahaba. He was praying his Nafal and he finished off his prayer. When he came over to the Prophet's nice and said, Why didn't you why didn't you come? And he said, I was praying. Yeah, Allah, Allah, the Prophet reminds him, Allah told us, all those who believe, answer Allah in the message when they call you so that he may give you life. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, he then enters into the the holy city of Al Quds Sharif and he enters into that interspace which we know as Al Mashad al Aqsa. 
uh, which the ayah was speaking about. And it's beautiful uh, what the Prophet Ali says, and this is in the Musaddaq of Imam al-Hakim, he speaks about Al-Qasan, he says, وَلَا نِعْمَ الْمُصَلَّهُ what an amazing place of worship it is. And then in case we missed it, he goes on to say that even if you just had a space where you could, like, like half a meter, you could argue, right? Uh, the space of your, a rein of a horse, where you, where, from where you could see Al-Aqsa, it's better for that person to stand there and just look Al-Aqsa. It's better than the whole dunya and everything in it. And in case, again, it's what you said earlier, in case we missed that, the Prophet ﷺ even said, "Man arada an yandur ila bukati min buka al janna, fal yandur ila baita maqdis." If any of you want to see a, a, a space, an interspace, which is from the, the the places of Jannah, let him look at the holy uh, holy masjid uh, al Aqsa. So, and we have here, and we were talking about Burak, and Burak is, you know, Subhanallah. We find we have narrations where Burak <coughs> is tied to the same ring where the prophets before. So like following in the, mm -hmm. the path of the, this is now the Ard al-Anbiya. This That's is the land of the prophets. That's al -Muqafi. Anyway, sorry. sorry. Yes. Sorry, go on, Afwan. Uh, no, I was, I was actually going to just finish off your, just finish off that and then I'll, I'm going to no, throw no, something at you. <laughs> no, but it's a proper, this is a proper point to make. Okay, okay. In fact, I'll go to it now to both of you. Go ahead. Because you, you, you two have been blessed, particularly yourself, um, Stadia Thrib, that you've regularly been to Al-Aqsa. I've only been once. Oh. I, no, I've, I, as in like many years ago, I, I, oh, I went and I was regular. I wish, I wish. We, Alhamdulillah, we've had the opportunity through work to serve Al-Aqsa and we will inshallah continue to inshallah. do that. Um, but well, I believe you, you've been as well. You, yeah, recent, more, much more recent. Uh, so I was going to ask that to you because I've not been blessed to go there, inshallah. Yeah, like I, mean, I mean, um, you know, when you go to Mecca al mukarramah there's a very unique spiritual Everything experience. Has its own uniqueness, yeah. And Al Medina and Munawwar is so different. Very it's so, so different. So I was going to ask you, like, when you get there and, and you recognize that this is the place uh, the Prophet came and this is like where all the prophets came to gather, they gathered to receive the Prophet. So and you walk in, despite all the madness that, and all the oppression and all the tyranny evil that's going on there, uh, what do you feel? What do you feel there? Uh, you feel, uh, well, well, for me personally, it was, uh, uh, I guess, a similar feeling in Makkah, uh, Makkah as well. It's Al Quds. This is the reason why it's called Al Quds. I think that's mm -hmm. the first thing. Allah is Al Quds, mm -hmm. the source of holiness, and you feel that city is holy. On, on, unlike in Medina Munawwara and uh, Makkah Makarama, where we see a lot of modern changes mm -hmm. to those harams, I think Al Aqsa, Alhamdulillah, wa shukrillah, has retained a lot of his uh, historical features and new feel that and you feel you're walking back in history, right? It's exactly. You just, and mm. speaking about walking, <laughs> I, I did, I, unfortunately I was, I think 19 or 20 when I, and I didn't see this narration, but Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he said something, something ajeeb. He said that Masjid al-Aqsa Mubarak was built by prophets was Sakaratu and they lived there. Mm. And then he went on to say, in case we missed it, he says, There isn't a hand span of space where a prophet has stood or done sajda there or qama malakun or an angel has stood. Now that, that is a unique interspace on planet Earth. There's just nowhere, like it's everything, Alhamdulillah, and I wonder what your experience was. It's, it has its own flavor, its own uniqueness, and you feel mm. history and holiness there. Absolutely. I mean, I'd, and the convergence of the 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 ahl, you know, the 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 ahl kitab, the the convergence of the the, the Abrahamic faiths in the, in that space. I mean, it, it definitely has a physical and a, and a spiritual uplifting dimension to it. You know, even just just physically with your senses when you stand there, you just you're just awestruck by the place. There, there's mm -hmm. a majesty to it, and then on a spiritual level, you just feel this. You definitely feel this upliftment. There's something that you feel this connection to Allah. It's, it's just not the same. Like you, you basically, it's one of those places where you don't, you don't need to be prepared. You don't, you don't even need to have good intentions. You don't you just go there. It's, it's almost like a hospital where you, you just go with all of your sicknesses. And I think and, it should, it should be it mentioned here kind of, that, that, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, when the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is asked by Maymunah bin Sa'ad radiallahu anhu about Masjid Al-Aqsa Al-Mubarak, Look at what he, 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 he says is Ard al wa Manshur. It's the land of resurrection and the gathering. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he says, He's categorical, Ali Salat. So he commands this Ummah, us, me, everybody listening and watching, go to Masjid al And by the way, our partners on the ground always said this. They said, more than anything else, with you know, money or support, and he said, come here. Let you, us feel you, part of this ummah. Like really, they're in like desperate times, and, 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 and the, the, it's, you know, obeying the messenger. <laughs> Ali Salat. So he said, go there and pray in it. 
And prayer in it is not like it prayer every, uh, anywhere else. You know, it has its own fadila as well. And what I found beautiful is, well, and it's prophetic. Maimuna bin Sa'ad radiallahu anhu and then said, but what about if you struggle to go there? And in some of the rewires, it says, Al-Ardhat Al-Harb. That at that time, it was even in war at that time. Mm. And she said, if, if you can't go there, if you struggle to go there, what should we do? And look at what he said, alayhi salatu. He says, Fal yuhdi zaytan yusraju fi qanadili. Allah. What phrases are these? He said, gift. And look, he doesn't say donate. He says, gift. Like it, you don't give to an in, quote unquote inanimate object, but here we see the Prophet Isa saying, gift oil to the lamps of Masjid Laksa and it'd be like the one who prayed there. I mean, Ya Rab, yeah, but he knew. Yeah. And I think that's categorical. He knew that there would be people of this Ummah who would be desperate to go to Masjid Laksa Mubarak, but for whatever reasons, and it continues today. They okay. struggle to actually get access and to pray in, in, in that interspace. So. May, may Allah reward those who make efforts yeah, to go yeah, there. And yeah. we encourage everybody to go visit Masjid Al-Aqsa Mubarak. And, you know, when we've asked the question, have you been to Makkah, Medina, or Al-Aqsa? Makkah, Medina, alhamdulillah, Muslims have gone. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. when it comes to Al-Aqsa, very few hands. Mm-hmm. So may Allah give us I mean, all I mean, it's almost yeah, yeah. From, from everything that you mentioned that we need Masjid Al-Aqsa more than oh, yeah. no yeah. about that. You know, the, the preservation and the, the blessedness and, the, uh, and that sanctity of that place, that is a, a, a marker for the state of the Ummah. You know, if if yeah, that, I heard this, this is, and, and I think people, you know, like when you couple this with the hadith, fasada ahlu sham fala fikum, when the people of Sham, that Levant area, become corrupted, there's no good left in you. So, as you said, it's a barometer. If 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 Al Aqsa is good, alhamdulillah, Ummah is good. Sham Sham is good. Ummah is good. Mm-hmm. If they fall, or there's an issue, and it doesn't matter if you're part of Sham or from Sham, that's. Doesn't matter. We're part of this ummah, and this yeah. is uh, Allahumma barak fi sha'mina. Oh, Allah blesses in our sham. It's ours, and it's something that needs to be, you know, preserved. Um, we have a moment left, but perhaps the most significant part of all of this has to be mentioned. It has to be mentioned here now, which is the gathering of prophets. Oh, okay. Fadl, and, and, and uh, just to open that, and we'll, we'll come back to you. The, 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 it, it, again, there's different rewires, but the one in Nasai is <laughs> Allah Akbar. Without getting too emotional, it's beautiful. He says, "Are you going to cry?" No, I'm not. Are you going to cry? You're going to cry. I'm, I'm going to hold it back because yeah, I know you're going to hammer me. Don't so be a little girl. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this for phraseology. The Prophet Ali <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Thumma <laughs> dakhaltu bait al maqdis." Then I entered into <laughs> the holy sanctuary of Masjid al Aqsa for Jumia li al anbiya and, ga- and gathered for me Allah. are the prophets. Alayhi masalam. Faqad damani Jibril hatta amamtuhum. And Jibreel alayhi salam, he brings me forward and I lead them in salah. I am their imam. Sheikh Burhan. Oh, I mean, and this, this is that point that I was waiting for. And, you know, we talk about interfaith dialogue and we talk about interfaith relations and everything. I think this is you one do. of the most, <laughs> one of the most inclusive moments that takes place because here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is really giving respect to the Christians and Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. He's giving immense respect to the the Jews and Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and all of the prophets and anybody who follows those prophets. You don't see any arrogance here. The Prophet is saying, I went to there and I prayed there. These are places of blessings. You know, pray these places. Go to Bethlehem, go to the grave of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. You know, pray at these places. He's giving them the respect and esteem. Like it's not a removal of the previous traditions. absolutely. You know, we're not saying, look, we're the best. Forget everything, forget your prophets. You know, just follow me. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam isn't saying that, and this is really beautiful. Said so the Isra will, the Isra especially, it has significance to the Jews and the Christians as well. You know, the, okay. you're you're hearing narrations of your prophets, and embrace it. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful. There's nothing in here where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is showing any arrogance here, and here, when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is, and not only that, is is his haq. To go to the front of the masjid and lead the salah. This is haq. Absolutely. That's categorical. And yet, it says, فَقَدَّمَنِي جِبْرِيلِ Alayhi salam. Like the, the humility of the messenger, alayhi salatu, is, is just and we, and we don't We don't speak about fit issues in the presence of Shaykh Harun, but you know, we we, we know from the... Because it's going to crush us. Yeah. yeah the, the, from, from the conditions of who should lead the salah. You know, when there's a group, when there's more than one person who's worthy of leading the salah, who how do you choose between who should lead? And so him leading, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, it shows us his superiority in every aspect over them when it comes to knowledge, when it comes to uh, eloquence of speech. You know, these are some of the conditions when it comes to beauty, when it comes to lineage. You know, the books of fiqh even go down to that kind of detail mm-hmm. as to who should lead the salah. Mm-hmm. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is superior Allah. in all of those levels. And that's why he, otherwise, if you look at it out of Adab, Sayyidina Ibrahim Alaihi is there, his, yeah. his forefathers. 
شنا اسماعيل and here we've got a really uh, beautiful riwaya this is, <coughs> and there are many riwayas like we said the, the, the number of riwayas about <coughs> al-Isra wal Mi'raj outnumber anything we have in the Meccan period here's another one uh, Sheikh uh, Harun to touch on uh, this is from the Jamia from Muhammad Tirmidhi he says Urida Ali al-Anbiya that the, the, the prophets are presented to me in Al-Aqsa it doesn't say Al-Aqsa You've added that. Okay. Come on, brother. We're going to assume. On. It's safe to assume. Uh, it's in Al-Aqsa. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Okay. Then. One, says okay, cool. Was, one says this was a vision. The others say, as you say. But there are some imams who said this was a vision that the Prophet Yeah, but but as you said, <laughs> I've ripped I've ripped the rug from underneath. No, no, no. I, well, that, that was his cringe. You can, no, you can clarify vision if you like. It doesn't no, appear that way, but yeah. N- <laughs> Um, no, just yeah. because there are now detailed, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam directly yeah, now, absolutely. he is describing what the Prophets looked like in case... Some, some of the shura, some of the commentators, this hadith mentioned this was in the vision state. Others said, as you mentioned, that this is um, at al-Aqsa on that night where uh, it's almost like the general comes and then the army's there. And and literally, uh, that's what it is because this is the fraternity of Prophets and then uh, Sayyiduhum comes. So they're all lined up. They're all marshaled um, to present themselves in front of, in, fr- in front of the greatest of all. And then the Prophet nice and start describing exactly how they look like. He describes Musa and them. In this report, he doesn't describe Isa and them. It's in other reports that he mentions. Um, he just he just mentions that he's sim- most similar to Arwa bin Masud the Thaqafi. And then a key detail here. When when you learn, and we've done a podcast before, this is about the physical um, description of the Prophet nice and. Based upon this, that's also how Ibrahim and Islam looked. So when you when you're looking at the description of Prophet Islam, you're also seeing um, as close as possible to say Ibrahim and Islam. Um, but what I wanted to finish with, because I think our time sure. fits much Um in the Burda of Imam al Busayri, um, chapter seven, there's a whole chapter just describing this greatest of all moments for the Prophet Islam, which is this journey, and this moment he mentions in a line. He says, وَقَدَّمَتْكَ جَمِيعُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَالرُّسْلِ تَقْدِيمًا مَخْدُومٍ عَلَى خَدَمِ All of the prophets and all of the messengers had you go forward in in the way that um, the one who served um, or the one who serves um, presents to the one who's being served. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's the makhdoom. He's the one who's being served. And all of the Anbiya, with all of the Prophets, with the, the greatest of all, like Ibrahim and Islam and Musa and Isa and all of these, the greatest of all human beings, the Khadam, the Khadam, the, they are at that moment, they are servants of, an, of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa or as, or as it seems, even though that's, uh, it's an Akhuwa, of a, it's a brotherhood of faith of messengers of, of the Lord. But that's perhaps the greatest moment within Al-Isra, that there you have 124,000 of them that are waiting to receive in soul, in soul. They're receiving the one that they themselves were told, um, that you're only going to be a prophet once you've accepted him as the, as the final messenger. Just to add one little thing, just to throw one little thing, and then we'll have a dua from Sheikh Burhan at the end. Um, Based upon this moment, Sayyidina Isa is a Sahabi. <laughs> Allah. Because he's because alive. Because he's alive. No, Be- based on this moment, right. Sayyidina Isa is a Sahabi. Also, based on this moment, Musa Islam finally enters into the Holy Land. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. So, Sheikh Harun, you mentioned in there, by, with, in Seoul, the mm. prophets are there in Seoul. Mm-hmm. So, just their souls are there, or is that specifically mentioned that it's just their souls that are there? That's what I was, uh, that's what I understood, unless other you know than, something other else. Other than Isa I, yeah, Isa is in his body and soul. That's why uh, biographers mention that he's Sahabi because of this moment. And I guess because he met the Prophet. Kind of reflection that unless uh, if you're something else, because no, it sounds like you wanted to go at me there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> wait for the next one. Yeah, and and, and I guess maybe I mean, it's to good honest, to clarify. It doesn't make a difference whether it's with body no, or but soul. Maybe, yeah. I think soul what should be clarified is that this is not a dream. Oh, for sure, for sure. Be, I don't know if we mentioned that earlier, but yeah. just to clarify, this is not a dream. Otherwise, we'd we didn't mention it, and that's such an important like, point. It's like, not a dream. This is the prophet's in a waking, waking state. Yeah, yeah. Because why would they fa- be so fascinated by you traveled a month's journey to exactly. Al-Aqsa if it exactly. was a dream? Yeah. Exactly. That's not ajib. That's nothing miraculous in that. Well, Jazakallah Khairan, uh, Sheikh Burhan, could we ask you to do the closing? Amen. Amen. And then, inshallah, the next podcast we have to go through. 
the Mi'raj, the second part of this journey. Sheikh Harun, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, wa afdalu salati wa sallam taslima ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Ya Allah, we ask you to send your peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, and all of the Prophets and Messengers and his family and his companions, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you to bless the uh, the two the, the three holy sanctuaries, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Makkah al-Mukarramah and Medina al-Munawwara and Masjid al-Aqsa, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you to increase our love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And remember these beautiful moments in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallam. Ya Allah Allah allows to visit those traces and those places that have been visited and touched by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam and the prophets. Ya Rabbi Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you to increase us in our closeness to these prophets and Ya Allah, attach us to them in love and in following and obedience to them in this world and in their presence in the hereafter. Ameen, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Wa sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Ameen, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Wa sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Ameen, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Wa sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Ameen, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Wa sallallahu alaihi wa Jazakallah and thank you so much for watching and listening and inshallah in the next podcast the second part of this of course we'll, we will move to Al-Mi'raj the ascension of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Jazakallah and Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuhu you're listening to Sunnah Stream, a podcast exploring the prophetic way.